that damn truck. Yeah. Get okay. him out of here. Hex, <laughs> pick him up by the scruff of his neck and boot him out. Drop him off. Okay. You're really um, keeping that narrative alive. That uh, we, have we, we can get the dog that the we saw um, outside of the truck yesterday instead. Oh, that's a perfect replacement. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> dog in, Johnny out. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is crazy. I don't know where to go from here. Uh, I do. Uh, we got two great teams. I think that there's a lot of questions on who's going to win because of their previous performances in like most recent history. Uh, especially because we like to be biased about the most recent results that have uh, impacted their <laughs> careers so far, right? So it's for the perfect <laughs> analysis. Just remember the last game. Yeah. Did they win? Well, They're going to win again. Yeah, like what lose? Florida went, won yesterday. They the 3 0 Toronto Defiance. So they actually have a really strong case coming into today. So maybe do the same thing to Houston, but also Houston I mean, defeated their arch nemesis of Dallas Fuel on their own turf. Yeah. And like, <laughs> That's why it's, it's tough. tough. It's They've a both weird one because. Big wins. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, like, Florida Mayhem kind of pounded. Like, uh, that's true. Pounded. Hydron just went crazy. And the Toronto Defiant just kind of fell over. Like, I didn't think people really expected it to be that one side. I was like, okay, because we were casting that one. I was like, all right, it's going to be a bit, a bit of a banger here. It might be a five mapper. But right. then Hydron just kind of logs in the game and just locks Sojourn and then just hits <laughs> right click. And then the, the entirety of Toronto Defiant died. So, that's yeah, true. it was a very strange series. Uh, but not so strange if you're a Florida Mayhem fan. Uh, I know Swing Chip has been begging on the timeline to cheer for the team and maybe that was what it was maybe uh swing chip really bring that uh, energy yeah but uh, against the houston outlaws might be a little bit different affair uh like you mentioned though to be fair the outlaws they beat dallas fuel in front of their home crowd on a lap like that is also pretty damn impressive it is impressive. I mean, I think they're still going to be a tough opponent. Both of these teams are coming in trying to pack a punch. Houston have already secured their top spot in the playoffs. Top six in Florida right now. We're trying to fight to get that seventh seed. I'm sure they'd love to play against Boston and, and just kind of maybe have a bit of an upper hand when it comes to how these seeds have really played out for the season. And when you see Animo on the roster, you're definitely looking at Florida Mayhem trying to run it down like they did against Toronto. Animo played in for the roster all three maps, and I think that's what a lot of teams are looking at. I mean, we just saw Faith do the same thing for Boston to be able to play that Lucio and have that speed available. And Florida loved to take full advantage of that, especially at some, with someone at the helm. But Houston, they've been looking quite clean and quite interesting haven't they jack yeah i mean look at the end of the day you win against uh, the dallas fuel the home stage but then uh, i think the houston outlaws have had a bit of a rocky season they've lost to teams they probably shouldn't have lost to mm -hmm. they've also gone to game fives against teams they probably shouldn't have done but they've picked up creative dante or doomte uh, he's been looking crazy good on the tank. Literally any tank, to be fair, at this point. Dude's never playing DPS again because he's the best tank on the team right now for the Houston Outlaws. Pelican and Merit, also in the DPS line, have looked stellar, but there has been those weak points throughout the season. I suppose right now it's not the worst thing in the world because the play-ins are just around the corner. Well, slash playoffs, I suppose. Um, and a win here isn't going to... Uh, win here for the Outlaws isn't really going to rock the boat all too much. Ideally, Mayhem win here, and if they do, they do actually play Boston Uprising in the play-ins next week. So that'll be kind of nice for them. Uh, obviously, you always kind of want to win, right? So Outlaws can upset True. them and make their opponent a little bit different. It, it, there's a few, like, dependencies here and there between today's matches. Oh, today's match versus the Outlaws and yeah. tomorrow's match uh, with Toronto Defiant. But uh, that's maths for a later time. A later time. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, they'll do math the, tomorrow on right the desk. Right get up and, and get yeah, here exactly. early for the Watchpoint pre-show where they hit you with the hard-hitting calculus of, of the Overwatch yeah. League. I need, a, I need a whole class in that, I feel like. Sometimes I... I don't They're understand the logic. You're not you're not <laughs> the only one to be fair. Like there's so much math that goes in between like what teams are playing. That's, who that's and, why like, they the pay point other calculations people and where they sit on the table. Exactly. There are smart <laughs> people in that out there that uh, have spreadsheets, graphs and charts and everything else that can uh, that do help us along with that. So that's yeah, all good. 
Yeah. Well, well, here's a fun. Here's a fun one. Uh, there's a there's a commonality of Boston Uprising with all of this, right? Houston Outlaws actually lost to Boston Uprising at the beginning of the stage, uh, three one, and then we just saw Florida maybe getting a chance to play against Five, Boston if they take four, a win here. Three, I think two, someone plays one. Boston again Round. tomorrow because they also have a match happening. Oh, yeah, Boston play again versus Paris to close out their season. Yeah, there's a lot of Boston uprising coming up in here. Let that sink in. All right, in. bit of a <laughs> different look here from uh, the Outlaws. Got Dante on the Orisa. With the Orisa with speed boost, to be fair, very quick here, right? Especially with that javelin, the spit, as you can see here from, uh, from Dante. Speed boost and spit. Oh, okay, checkmate goes down right now. That's not good. I like both comps, to be fair. Just yeah. uh, holding the point kind of comps. No, and, and I love this because Dante is one of those players you really have to keep an eye on for how much versatility he's added to the Houston Outlaws this stage. He really was predominantly a Doomfist one-trick for the team, and they made their compositions and their game plans around that particular hero choice. But this stage, he's played Zarya, he's played D.Va. Uh, Unter likes to say that he's like the best Zarya and D.Va in the league. Like, you know, no recency bias at all whatsoever there. He might be the best Arisa too, I don't know, let's find out. Alrighty. Aaron, Hydron taking the 1v1. Ooh, Hydron's been hot with it recently. Continues that trend right now. Windows opened up. A wall isn't going to survive too long against the damage amplification, unfortunately. So that green wall there from Pelican. Too much. There's the flip for the Mayhem. They're going to be in a good position here. They're going to have Blizzard a little bit quicker than Pelican. So a speed boost yep. with a Blizzard might just end it all. Yeah, I mean, this is this is really big here. The, I love looking at the Reinhardt versus Orisa matchup because I think that when you look ahead towards playoffs, you might see a little bit more of that, depending on how the patch looks. We have a few teams that do have a propensity to play that Reinhardt. But someone is not one of those players I would have expected to have that. But, you know, you can just kind of run down the Orisa. Oh, Blizzard thrown out. It's going to separate the rest of the Outlaws here uh, away from the point. Not a good position for anybody really to be in. That. Yeah, having the Blizzard online that quick, a little bit devastating. Okay, Dante going with the Terra Surge. Okay, I mean, maybe he's going to switch at this point. Uh, let's have a look. Is he going to switch? Maybe switches? to go over to like a Zarya. Okay. Yep. Oh, yep. there you go. Quarter perfect. No, oh, I love it. I love it when that happens. I was going to say, D.Va doesn't really work here because your defense matrix is really to try to deal with the, the tank, it, it kind of feels like, and also, you know, it'd be great for like Hydron and Checkmate, but someone's Reinhardt, you need to be able to do something against it. Having the bubble to at least soak up some of that hammer damage feels quite good. Hammer down for someone, does kill Lashro, but that Blizzard helping Pelican to creative stay alive. Mary's kind of on a nice little off angle here, but he does end up missing that railgun shot. Checkmate takes him out after popping himself into a little freezer. And with 75% with a window, the Houston Outlaws again changing their comp up. They're going for the Genji instead. Wow. And Florida Mayhem playing up. Or kind of like, they're kind of split right now. Someone's up on the high ground here, and the rest of the gang are just on this low ground. I guess they're just seeing where the Houston Outlaws want to approach this point with. Yeah, oh, no, oh. no, someone's going in. They're split completely. Lastro and someone else is off into the sidelines. Lastro gets that beat down just in time. Pelican did receive the overshield, but might not matter. A headshot from Merit does end Checkmate's life. Oh, what a perfect charge oh. from someone. Takes Dante off of the map, removes him from the game. And Outlaws, they do manage to find that flip, but may have firmly in control of this fight. Yeah, they're going to get the flip back, and I don't know who from Houston's going to be able to come touch, because <laughs> someone's already uh, jetted off somewhere else. And uh, that's going to be it. Overtime timer goes away. Wow, Florida. Reinhardt comp. How fun. Score. One. You take that, you take that. I mean, on that map, it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of been played for a lot, uh, a long time, right? You've got it the has. paint, wall off people on the point. Like, it's it's just super good. I remember way back when, or like last year at least, when some Korean contender teams were running like the Sim May. Like, that was disgusting. Yeah, oh, of, the, like, the Ice just, Wizard. Yeah. Yeah, oh okay. man, that was <laughs> awful to run into. If you didn't control the point you're against that comp like well, yeah dislodging that was horrible what i what i'm really interested in is that we've seen florida play on 
Nepal before, and, and when they played on Village versus Boston, we actually didn't see the Reinhardt at all. It was Sigma, and it was also Zarya that they came out with. It was on Lijang Control Center, which is the first time we really saw Florida use this Reinhardt comp at all. But it doesn't work as well here on Sanctum, despite the fact that maybe you can charge people off into the pit. That would have been really funny to watch, but it's going to be Zarya versus Zarya here. Hydra Sun off the series super well. He's 10 and 0 right now. Determined not to die. Ooh, made that 11 and 0 with a snipe onto Last Stroke. Florida Mayhem looking clean with it right now. They're going to be able to get that point. And with Dante running the Zarya, it's uh, obviously now you're not just kind of chopping and changing your tanks. Yeah. And on the offense, you've got to be running into Hydra and just throwing those disruption shots out. Someone just kind of right clicking you to death. Oh. They actually decide. Killing Hydron's the best course of action. Both Sojourns traded for. That's Hydron's first death so far of the series. Can the Houston Outlaws, they do have a little bit of space. Can they actually push out any more? Checkmate goes pretty low. And Dante's just kind of struggling to go into this high ground. But with it, he spotting out a alone someone who just took that mega pack. And uh, Ruble now desperately trying to get towards him. Throws out the lap in time. And someone actually survives that too. The Houston Outlaws just unable to capitalize on the isolated someone. I think someone stole the health pack over there. I, I, I stole it a couple of times. I they? must have Jeez. been a couple of times, and also just the sustainability of having Animo there as well was was definitely helpful. It's just so wild to me that he was able to survive that long. Yeah, the pocket for these tanks in this stage has been incredible. You know, Punk never dying in their first match of the stage, and someone here too just was outlasting. Rail got available. Doesn't want to test Checkmate's mental there with uh, the reflect. A graviton surge in a window. Checkmate hits triple shuriken on Dante's dome. She's now lost even with Merit sitting a uh, hundred railgun energy there uh, behind a window. They weren't able to win that. Graviton Surge used by someone, just picked Dante out, and the Houston Outlaws have got a whole wave of ultimates coming in, but the Florida Mayhem have just been taking this uh, assault from the Outlaws in their stride. Yeah, I mean, just withstanding this too, I wouldn't be surprised, okay, I was gonna say, I wouldn't be surprised if someone survived that. I mean, you feel pretty good if you're the Florida Mayhem right now. Both Graviton Surge and that Sand Barrier has been used by the Outlaws as they do eventually get that point flip. So you can come back in with a blade, maybe uh, just focus creative out. Uh, Checkmate gets a little bit less protection, of course. I mean, Arnav, I guess, can kind of dive with him. He gets bubbles, but you have to focus down that lap to take care of that Batiste. You do. Yeah, so that's going to be like Hydron's job or something to make sure that that gets taken care of. But RuPaul also is going to have the amplification matrix, and so if you're looking for Hydron to be able to do extra damage, then set that up on the corner there as Checkmate looks for an opportunity to use this blade. Hydron takes care of Pelican. Both the Genji and the Zarya trading. Oh, what was Hydron going? Why was he just in the background? Ah, probably trying to go flip the point, or at least try to push Houston to go try to contest with him, right? I think at yeah. this point you're going to struggle to get through the door because this is exactly what Houston Outlaws had trouble with. And so the wraparound here from Checkmate is uh, pretty important when you think about how you need to just get Houston Outlaws away. From Pelican. He does get bubbled. He is pretty low. Takes that RuPaul regardless. Even Jaime can't finish off the Genji. He's deflecting, I think. That's why the damage didn't end up going through. Or he was healed. I'm sure, one or the other. Regardless, 65% for the Outlaws and building. Wow, Florida Mayhem now trying to make a dent in the defense of the Outlaws. It's not proving that successful. Yeah, Rose, once again, Hydron trying to go for these cheeky flanks. Not working out. No, and even check me wrapping around outside to try to go back by the health pack and then sneak in with the blade. Ah, Animo's going to go with him this time, it looks <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, uh, Animo's going to Oh, no, they know, they know. Okay, well, oh, well, well, they can't waste any more time here. This. Last chance. Ooh. That lamp couldn't even deploy quick enough to save uh, someone there. Last chance indeed. There's the lamp. Jesus, look at those moon shoes. He's flying to a different stratosphere. Creative survives the onslaught check made with that blade. 99% for the outlaws. No one to touch for the mayhem. Very different affair than it was on Village. 100 to 99. And we go to round number three. Score. That was a very different state of affairs. I mean, Sanctum is one of those maps where the defending team has a lot 
of an advantage. You can hold up really close, and when you're playing without a shield, it's a little bit harder for you to be able to kind of squeeze past that main choke point so that you can access the backline, you know, creative, and RuPaul get to play so far back that that Baptiste is always, almost always safe. And so you have Immortality Field with the ready amplification mage you're constantly pumping out healing. And so it can be really, really tough. Out Houston Outlaws were able to actually get past and then, you know, capture the point back, but that wasn't before Florida Mayhem had walked away with what? Like 99% of the point? So that's just kind of how Sanctum can go. But there's way more open territory here as we head over to Shrine for our third and final round. And we're actually going to see someone play a, another tank. Uh, it's the Winston now. Look, look how many looks we've seen from someone so far. Talk about versatility. Nope. Not quite versatile there. It's Pelican. I like uh, RuPaul sitting on that, like, giga off angle. Uh, on the armor, just feel pretty nice not being under any sort of pressure. Although when you are scoped as armor, you do move slower, so uh, mm -hmm. that feels bad if a sojourn's kind of looking at you, and your head's kind of ducked too. The, the hitbox for armor is kind of funny, it's, uh, kind of crunched up to a small ball when you are scoped. So it might be a bit easier for sojourn to hit that railgun shot. Pelican trying to get a little bit of revenge there by the looks of it. Creative does fall, so just recalls the main healers for both teams already dead. The Florida Mayhem still up people, however. No good defense. Yeah, though I thought the Winston might just get a little bit rolled over, but when you have RuPaul sitting at such a ridiculous like angle and he's super far back, like yeah. it doesn't feel as bad. Like you have to invest a lot if you're the outlaws to try and disrupt a lot of that healing. In fact, Creative's gonna go onto the Ana here with Lasher on the Lucio. Yeah, I mean, why not? RuPaul is at such an advantage being able to play so far back and especially with Hydron too. Good name. It's gonna be tough. Oh, I mean, someone, I'm not sure when his uh, jump was on cooldown there, but he stayed way too long in the front line when he was anti. Yeah, Dante's playing that kill up with ease. Can uh, the Outlaws finish this fight quickly? I don't know if already take a Mastro with him, but uh, he doesn't end up going down. I'm just going to stall for a little bit of time on the Lucio, but that's about it. Okay, Outlaws do end up recapping. They got grab, they got uh, the beat coming up, as well as that overkill, even the blade. So, uh, in reality, uh, in a little bit of a fight here, they will have four ults. But Florida Mayhem also going to come in with theirs. RuPaul's Nano didn't really find its target either. 15% on that ult. Used it last fight. Didn't really get any value. No, I maybe just be able, being able to get something uh, a little bit closer to being online. But no, it didn't convert over to any type of pick. Someone, though, can use Primal Rage defensively if he gets stuck into Dante's grab. Kind of smack people yeah, away. Yeah, you are a bigger hitbox, but you get a lot more HP, that's for sure. There's the Graviton Surge. Nicely timed beats gonna help sustain, but not for long. Chain then goes down anyway to Pelican. Are the Mayhem gonna commit? No, they are not. They're just gonna reset. Hydron still randomly picks up kills. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> I would like to know. But, uh, I mean, he's got some ridiculous el eliminations right now. He's sitting on 19 limbs versus the next highest teammate at eight being checkmate. Yeah, I mean, this is just kind of more of the same from Hydron from his match versus oh, Toronto players, Defiant. Players. Right? Like, I remember there was a map yesterday, he went 19 and 0 or something ridiculous. He just didn't die. He's, he's had a, a few times now. But. On the Sojourn. All right, Grace does get anti but a bubble will cleanse it. There's the Nano, there's the Blade. Oh, nice slide away from Hydron. Does waste a little bit of time, but Pelican still finds the kill. Someone is put to sleep, but he was primal, so no insta kill for Pelican using that Nano Blade, but the damage has already already been done. The majority of that in Hydron has already been erased from the battlefield. 80% for the Outlaws as they want to bring this one home. Another nice thing created. A right click melee for Pelican finishes off someone. No primal rage to go for the touch, so it's looking like a loose in Arnimo to get that OT. Barrett's gonna play Doorman though. Look at the overclock getting ready to go. Someone's gotta get there. 3%, 2%, 1% contested. It's actually checkmate on the tracer. Is there now who gets flung out onto someone? Merritt looking, hunting, searching for someone in the back line to shoot with his railgun, but it doesn't quite find anybody. It's someone's bubble that he's looking at right now. Doesn't want to duel with Hydron, or at least not for the time being. No, there are a lot of other members from the Florida Mayhem looking straight at him. And now he's going on the offensive. Look at Hydron straight in the face, but notice the support are lonely in the front line. RuPaul and Merritt end up going down as overtime is here, and the Houston Outlaws use that beat to try and 
keep it in their favor. Someone also falls as the Florida Mayhem now unable to get back to the point as Outlaws make it a 2-1 on control. Very close though from both teams and we've seen a lot of different looks of compositions from them as well. Sticking mostly to the Sojourn as well as the Genji to shore up that damage line. But someone showing us the Reinhardt, the Zarya, the Winston. What else is in store? We also saw Orisa. We, we haven't seen D.Va yet, or or Hog, but no, no, just we haven't seen D.Va yet. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe there's time for Hog. You know, Dante mm, mm, whipped out the uh, Arisa. No, yeah, stop. yeah, someone's playing the Winston, and uh, yeah, stop maybe that. a little bit of... Little, little Road Hog? No, maybe, we'll that. see. Maybe a little <laughs> cheese. We're going on to Hybrids, our next map type. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Oh, welcome back. That was quite a map uh, from Hydron there. He ended that one 20 and 6, but couldn't yeah. quite land the dub for the Florida Mayhem. And overall, Houston were actually down eight final blows versus the Mayhem. So they were down in kills and still took the map rows. That's just impressive. Whenever you see a team do that, I think it just speaks volumes to how respectful like the other team is being towards the other one, like maybe not aggressing in if they can't get the final blow. It, it's There's a lot of different things happening in these two teams matching up, but this was a map that I always thought would be very close. And we've, we've seen that so far, at least from our first map of this series. Good, looking good. Pretty close. Five mapper. Five mapper? No, four. I think it's going to be four. Three Actually, one, yeah. I, I thought this last night. I was thinking about it. I was like, okay. Because yesterday was a speed run. We had three, yeah, three I zeros. Think was the I think it was. Someone, someone is going to have to look back on that, but I'm pretty sure yesterday was the fastest three-match Overwatch League broadcast we have had this season. Um, but this one, I was looking at both of the matches we had today, and I was like, oh, no, 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 four maps each. It's going to be a 3-1 for, for New York and Boston, which was true. And I think it's going to be a 3-1 for this one also. Hello. Three Hello. Wait, 3 one for who, though? I didn't really say, did I? <laughs> That's none of your <laughs> did business. did this last time. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it's 3-1. Yeah, it's none of your business. Uh, no, I'm just 18. kidding. No, I, I think it's Houston. I do think that Houston will, will get okay. the 3-1. Um, I just think that they're a team that has had a lot of uh, practice with this meta. Um, you know, Florida, they, they had like a, this weird gap in, in between the stage where, you know, they had a few matches and they had a break and, and then in that time, the meta evolved and I don't know if Florida can keep up just yet. I'm not gonna give them the recency bias of their win over Toronto because Toronto was a little sick and, and maybe recovering from that. But Houston, I just, I just think that they work together really well as a unit and they always seem to come back strong with an iron battle. So I'm giving it to them. Jake definitely wants to instill the iron mental, the iron will into the team. Might need something a little bit more than that for Merit's sake, though. He does go down. Dante's also super low. He's now was getting a wipe here by the looks of it. Or at least. Maybe they get out. You want to chase. You just want to chase. You have Lucio. Just chase. Just chase. Get kills. Kill, 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 kill. This is me and Carson. Kill, 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 kill. Go, 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 go. I remember go. this. I was like, oh my play god, fast. I don't know what to do here. Okay, just press just W key. Fast. Oh my god. That's, That's yeah. it. If you have Panic. Lucio, only press W key. <laughs> Chase them to spawn. They can't group as five if they're dead. That's true. Just, I just turned on speed, I think, and was just like, okay, we're, we're sending it. Let's go. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Always send it. All right. Well, let's right, see we'll if Houston can send it again. Come on yeah, now. Easiest transition in history right there. <laughs> All right, charge up shot for Merritt. Doesn't want to. Ooh, yeah. Doesn't want to go for that window. I like the uh, I like the window play there from Florida Mayhem, just uh, making Houston Outlaws reset completely, basically, um, giving Arnimo enough time to build up towards the South Barrett and someone towards that grab it on Surge, which will have online first, throws it out straight into the window. In fact, yeah, there's not too much you can really do about that. Dante got that beat late from Lastro. It's all about the cleanup now. Houston Outlaws lose one of their key ultimates, but are now going to have to turn the play. Yeah, that's a, that's a really, really rough there for Houston. I mean, having the sound barrier used in response to the grab does mean that it's not available for the blade. 
Um, and so now you're kind of looking at Houston, just like immortality field cycle through that, make sure that's online. Last row getting a boop as he's close enough to the team or just having some type of bubble online there for Dante to save them. Good grab, good beat though, and a lap on top. Wow, Checkmate did not fall below 100% there, and he even pulls the blade. Look at the people that are falling from the sky. It was Lastro, but uh, he is now in spawn. All good. Very, ooh, not quite so lucky. Nope, that, this, this is looking like almost a full hole Just here. to, just to point this out, by the way, um, we are two and a half minutes into the game. Outlaws haven't got a kill yet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know. All right. This right. might be a full hold. Uh, just, just the way that things are going, you know, uh, Houston, they're putting on the aggression. They're starting to use some of these ultimates first. Like, Dante was the first to hit the grab, but uh, Hydron here with the overclock, I'm going to give this one to Hydron any day. He got a quad last time we saw him on Ilios Well. Okay, here comes the kill for the Outlaws. I believe it's, there's a lamp kill. That's half a kill. It'll do. Play's been used. Someone is the oh, focus. One. First kill for the Outlaws, and it's, it is someone. Great if it dead, however, not good for the Outlaws. They've only got Lastro to heal now on the points. They're trying to just hunt for remaining members of the Florida Mayhem, but they want to group and go in the last possible second. Two and a half ticks acquired for Houston, and with no ults left in the bank, Lastro has to get this beat online if they want to sustain, although saying that, Checkmate and RuPaul are in, uh, in trouble. And there you go, Outlaws. They only need four kills. That was all that they needed to save that first point. Not even five. That's five now, but here we go. Okay, no, no, it's good, it's good. Yeah, Outlaws just wanted to give their fans a show. This happens all the time, whether it's a sweep or a C9 or something. This is just Houston's way of paying the fans back. Because you got to keep them on the edge of their seats, you know? True. You just do. You just do. Uh, I think they're really set up for success now, working into the second point, too. You know, Lastro has a sound barrier online again. Creative as well to kind of throw that amplification matrix. Try to push explore to Mayhem off of the high ground. But, cool. Someone is getting uh, pretty pretty charged up there for the structure shots compared to control now. What's the rush? Ooh, last room. You gotta run. We're good. Yeah, Houston Outlaws are just taking part of the moment. There's the grab. The lamp does land, and so does that beat. Oh, got to contend with Hydra now. He's trying to hunt for the clips. He's got to put it on TikTok, and Al will also put it on the TikTok. Make sure you check out the Overwatch League TikTok. Yeah, that plug, crazy. The plug. No, no kills happen, so uh, I'm good. I'm allowed. Okay, there you go. No, no kills, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I, I mean, that just is enough to scare away the Houston Outlaws, so I think if you hear anybody... Uh, yeah, if you're on the uh, enemy team and you hear Hydron pop the overclock, I think you back up. You pay respect to that man, that's all I'm saying. Good grab. Lamp, then beats. Perfectly timed. Someone's still pretty low, but Creative does end up dying. Houston Outlaws just in a little bit of a cage match up on the high ground there. Jesus. I've never seen 10 people jump into the same location like that and just brawl it out like uh, underground boxing. Oh, yeah, so Matt, Matt's going to love that. That's true. Those of UFC yeah. and boxing. Uh, any, any type of like actual like physical sport. Matt, Matt's ears perked up from that, I bet. Yeah. I, just, I just bet. Uh, he does love the sports ball, that is for sure. <laughs> the beat sports. I don't understand yeah. beat sports. I'm not gonna lie. That's why I'm here, man. I understand Genji Blade though, <laughs> and there's two of them. Checkmate's pulled the blade, the lamp's been put down, it's great, it's been isolated from the rest of the team, same with Dante, had to back up, scared of someone. Checkmate isolates him, gets 30 seconds to go. Uh, Hydra gets a, a shot reflected back at him, and uh, killed, but with 30 seconds, and Houston Outlaws without a support halt. Ooh, this looks rather dicey, someone's got the grab. I mean, the blade and I guess you're going with overclock I mean, here. I think, I uh, think someone just, just eats it out. Just hope you snipe somebody. But yeah, someone could just eat I it. I think someone just actually Dante. eats it. Yeah, literally at Dante or Animo. Just stop. Wait, oh, yeah. No, 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 touch. Oh, no, 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 touch. no, 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 Waited for Dante and Lastro to kind of approach that final corner to get to the the payload. Grab the corner. Easy collapse from someone. Florida Mayhem. Only granting Outlaws a single point. Still winnable, though, for the Outlaws, I will say. But yeah. a good defense on uh, on second. That was a super good defense. I mean, all around, like, uh, they, bar they all barely faltered. 
Jack, how many eliminations total did Houston get in that? Uh, yeah, so in that, that round, second push, they only got one, one or two extra elims. Yeah, like so that's that's <laughs> unbelievable. Like Florida yeah. had an almost flawless defense. They had, you know, Houston had no eliminations up until the point that they team wiped Florida to capture first, and that was already when overtime was taking effect. And then the same, they didn't have much time to add it to be able to make it that far. It's still winnable, but mad props there to Florida for just keeping that defense so strong. Super clean map so far. 21 kills for Florida, seven for the Outlaws. And yeah, like you said, they had to get the team wipe on point A. It wasn't even a team wipe, it was, they got five and then I think six kills as they were chasing hey. people that were respawning and then a single kill on the next kind of- Oh yeah, yeah, you're the right. Halo. So it's, yeah, it's looking pretty rough for the Outlaws. Although they did win with a kill deficit last map. Exactly, that's again. why I'm not counting them out of this one just yet. Cause we can definitely Although look they, at that actually, math, but- There is no way they win with a kill deficit. <laughs> Pushing onto a point, team wipe, yeah, there's, there's almost no way. Well, I, okay, I'm uh, not going to speak into existence. No, no, that's no weird. Way. Let's see. Disruptor shot. Zarya bubbles. Oh, kill. There it is. Another kill. Let's go. <laughs> Woo. Pelican does end up going down. Lamp has been used. Someone is super high energy. Mary's going to have to be careful. Yeah, he uses the power slide to get away. But uh, Dante has been heavily focused by the Florida Mayhem. Pretty just uh, putting a target on his back. Glowing bright green right now. Checkmate caught off guard, but Dante once again fell pretty low. Outlaw's back line looking rather strong. Astro created key in top up. Someone actually almost went down there, and the reason why he's still alive is because of how much Animo and Bukal have focused the healing into him. Like, oh, I would be nervous. Oh, someone's gonna get in a grab online in like maybe five seconds. seconds. Yeah, I mean, I'd uh, wager a couple of. Yeah, that, that, here it is. that was about five seconds. Right? Grabs on surge. It's pretty big. Lamp's also pretty good. Ooh, oh, Dante does take out someone, but look at these windows. They're all flat screens. Doing their best. Florida Mayhem is one though. A little bit shinier, a little crisper. I can take it to the rooftops like he's a fire player. And then Florida Mayhem will end up getting that first checkpoint. Kill count, kill check. 27 to 10. Right now. Yeah. Dante, uh, 10% away from that grab, but yeah, that was the deciding factor. Someone getting his a little bit sooner. I mean, I worry now because at least, you know, Lastro has the sound barrier online to contend with Checkmate's bullet. And so that's what Checkmate is hunting for right now, trying to wall climb up, trying to get some shuriken into the back line of the Houston Outlaws. But I mean, if, if Dante doesn't hit the grab, if the sound barrier is enough to save people, then, then that's one fight. That, that's all that Florida really need here to finish out this map. Time the series. I think they got 4.30 to do. Yeah, all right, Outlaws playing Mayhem in their own time. game. But Pelican's already pulled the blade. Sound barrier stops any of that damage going through. And Checkmate dashes to safety. <laughs> Okay, Houston evening up the score a little bit here with these glimpses. It was great too that they only really needed the sound barrier there. You know, they used the amp matrix to try to defend off that first point, but the sound barrier came in super clutch. And now Houston have a lot more to work with. They've been able to withstand a lot of the onslaught of Florida Mayhem salts, but they've got to be careful on this high ground here. Pelican's gonna try to look for the blade. Oh man, Dante ascended from the heavens just then. Lamp and beat this to save someone's now. life. And here comes Hydron. You gotta be careful. Everybody's lining up. Don't give him the collapse. Please don't give him the collapse. Merritt is trying to duel with him, but Merritt also falls pretty damn low. The Florida Mayhem, but meanwhile, Rose, because they forced the Outlaws into this very tight corridor, often for high ground, they're moving the payload for free onto this bridge. Luckily, Houston Outlaws can fire downward, and they still have the blade and the flat screen to deploy. Speaking of which, RuPaul's going to use his. It's, uh, it looks like Hydron and him just firing through it right now, but it again forces uh, Outlaws into a position they don't really want to be. Checkmate's taken pretty low, and as the payload rounds this final corner, Outlaws have to touch. Blade pulled, Hydron someone dead, Pelican's Blade doesn't get too much done, but it's okay. It's going to save them, at least for the time being. Two and a half meters to go. The Florida Mayhem, they've got a lot of time left in their bank, just under three minutes. Oh no, no. please, please. No, 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 there's three people on the point. There's no way, yeah, Lastro's chilling. It's all good, it's all good. There's no way, no, there's no way. It's too far away. It's too far away, it's too far away. 
We've seen worse things, to be fair, but it is too far away. Why is Otomo back there? I think Otomo oh, actually is going to try to... Oh, no. He's trying to put, He's probably going to try and boot Mera off the high ground at this point. I can yeah. imagine. Oh, no. Pressure payload. No, no, okay, no. Pressure payload. Please. Outlaws are oh, away. Oh, they're looking. Okay, okay. Oh, but grab. Everyone's Over the graviton split. surge on the stairs. Oh, Dante oh, split oh, off completely. Oh, the B ends up coming out just in time, but because Lastro and Pelican try to kill the Lucio on the payload, their attention was diverted. Now Pelican just gets laser beamed out of the sky, and secret agent Arnimo ends up coming up big for the Florida Mayhem there, distracting two members of the Outlaws and gaining Florida a map win. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. I, I mean, we were looking at it because we were like, yeah, this has happened before. Sorry, Houston. It has happened to you before. But I guess not in that way. Not in that way at all. But they really <laughs> did set up for someone's Graviton Surge pretty nicely there. Wow. Awesome stuff so far. Florida Mayhem, uh, they do take that map away from the Outlaws. Outlaws look a, a little bit washed out at the very start of the map. Like they struggled to get that first point, only getting the kills uh, when they actually managed to cap uh, low kills on their side. We'll see if they can shore this up as we go to another one. It's going to be Dorado on the other side of this break. We'll see if there's any substitutions as well.
Welcome back. Um, kind of a one-sided affair there for the Florida Mayhem on Eichenbard. It feels like their map, or at least Hydron's map, when he was playing the Sojourn. Attempted back cap from Arnimo forced <laughs> both the Genji, well, and Lastra on the Lucio to get off of the high ground, stop Arnimo from back capping, and then what did Florida do? Well, someone just runs up into the high ground, grabs Dante, they kill him. A late beat comes out from Lastro because he was on the floor trying to protect uh, the payload. Yep. And the Florida Mayhem roll over the Outlaws. It is, um, yeah, it was a close map number one, but map number two was a very different affair. We are going to Dorado. It's our next map, Rose. So uh, what do you make of this one? Uh, it makes a lot of sense that we're not going to see any swaps here from either team. This has really been the starting five for each team that we've seen just kind of be used to the most recent successes. And they've been looking good and at least synergized together. I think for Houston, though, they need to do they need to clean up how they are making these engages. And I feel like it's someone's Zarya that's really been catching them by surprise. I mean, he's been charging up these grabs faster than I think Houston Outlaws feel ready for. And also, like, Florida Mayhem is just one of those tricky teams that will pull something random out of their back pocket and make it work. They were the first team to try the Roadhog on Gibraltar. They were the first team to use these symmetric teleporter strats in order to try to wrap around the defending team and get out of spawn way faster for, like, maps you would have never expected it for. Circuit Royale... What was the uh, we saw one even just like a few weeks ago uh, from Florida as well that was just kind of random, but they always seem to do stuff like that and it's really fun to watch. Super fun. I mean, honestly, any team uh, any Kings team Row. takes my vote. If uh, oh, we are in a brief pause by the way. I'm not entirely sure what that's about, but uh, it looks like we're on pausing actually. I tell a lie. we uh, you didn't even see the pause, so it's fine. I can see it on my screen. You can't see it on the screen. It's all good. It's all good. We're going <laughs> to Dorado, but uh, yeah, any. Any team takes my fancy when they play funny compositions. More Torbjorn, please. Torbjorn, very Maybe funny. Torb. I don't know how much Torbjorn you've actually seen from Florida. None. I'm pretty sure none. Uh, we've seen it from Proper, though. But Proper plays everything. And he put Bastion today, so who's True. really surprised there? True. Never All mind. I'm saying is Torbjorn has a turret. And the turret shoots, <laughs> and then you also shoot. But if you miss, the turret always hits, so it's all good. Yeah, so we, good I don't damage. actually think we've seen any tours. No. No, I mean, At yeah, all. No, no. Oh, and when he shoots left click now, it doesn't look like a Cheeto anymore. It looks like spaghetti. Hello. Well, if you don't believe me, go into practice range right now and shoot Torb's gun. It looks like spaghetti. I, it looks uh, it's a little more appropriate for his alt because it looks like spaghetti sauce. True. Wait, was that intentional? Do you reckon that's intentional? I hope it's intentional. I don't know. <laughs> Ga you gotta make, you gotta give him like um, a, 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 oh, got like a, a torp hand. skin. Yeah, with a chef's hat. <laughs> exactly. You just wait. Or like, They're gonna steal that idea. No, he and hits you with a spatula, <laughs> like a wooden spatula <gasps> instead of his hammer. That's actually a <laughs> goated skin idea. Yeah, there you go. Free say. idea. Please take. For and, and bring free idea, next. team. Four, there you go. <laughs> Chef Corp skin coming at you. All right, let's have a look at the uh, the picks here for the Florida Mayhem. Throwing Tracer and Hydron on the Widow for defense. Uh, Outlaw's going a little bit more hmm. more like meta-worthy, I suppose, with the Sombra and the Tracer of the Demon. Yeah, and this is something that we've seen a few times here from Florida. I mean, the Widowmaker, Somebody especially on Dorado, has been super successful for a lot of teams. Washington Justice, when Happy was still on the team, uh, made a legendary push against the Atlanta Reign using the Widowmaker, just actually just not dying. And so if Hydra can keep getting these big picks, um, especially on the defense, you know, you stop the aggression from the attacking team for so long. But Hydra has to be able to convert this to picks. <laughs> Who has contend with the Diva Matrix? Yep. Last in the turn. And a Sombra. A Widowmaker. And a Sombra, too. Yeah, you saw uh, Merritt a little bit earlier on trying to go for the hack and then the, the kill. But they do have Arnimo on the brig. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe Arnimo can't heal all this damage. Nope. There's a team kill. Okay. Houston Outlaws. They all want the same thing that happened last map. Signing this strong with a team kill, and they're going to get point A. Yeah, I mean, the one thing about the Widowmaker is that if it's on the defense and you aren't getting the picks, you're not providing point presence either. So that contest is a little less likely Ooh. to happen. But uh, hmm, I wonder what happened. Nice kill. There. Was that scoped in? 
And S, bro. Nice oh, shot. yeah, there you go. Okay, Pel Pelican maybe not expecting that one. That might have actually been a scoped in shot. And Pelican's head just got clean taken off there. But that's exactly what the Hydron needs to do. Oh, replay. I love the others. Bonk. Ooh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> no. 45 degree shot yeah, there. Absolutely. No Very panic nice. either from Hydron. I, I think a, many people would have just like heard the tracer blink and grappled away. But Hydron was like, no, no, no. I got a charge up shot. I'm confident. <laughs> no fear. Exactly. That's what you need is Winnermaker. Just no fear. Perma grapple. Shot. You don't need the grapple for safety from killing people. All right, self destruct from Dante to get that remake. Nano's come out onto someone. Oh dear, the back line of the huge Nano is not looking so good. I say that. A beautiful little dance around there from Creativity. He lands asleep on the Nano somewhat. As a, a party gift onto Lastro there, he does Nano it as soon as he got dove. So Creative not only sleeping the Primal Raging Winston, but also saving Lastro in the front line with the Nano boost. All right, Houston Outlaws. Coming alive. They're taking everything that Mayhem Edition out right now and uh, just kind of shoving it back in their face. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take this as evidence that Nanoing your Zenyatta is good. always better than Nanoing your Winston. No, I, I oh. know, but for real, I think. <laughs> no, for real, just always Nano your Zenyatta in your rankings. Do it. Do it, please. Ooh, I want the dearie Nano. me. That hurts. Again, they see the frustration in his face there. Once more, Hydron clicks on his little head. They take back the high ground. It was very close, though, to be fair. Uh, Florida Mayhem did end up using the rally. The, the meter and the 45 uh, to go. And it's going to regress slightly. But he's now still in a decent spot. That, yeah, they're, they're looking for the EMP here. That's really what they're playing for. I know that's super frustrating for Pelican because you're kind of looking at the Tracer to be able to, to help out against the Widow. But uh, EMP works just as well. <laughs> It does. I think it was a solo EMP on Hydro. Could be right. Transcendence from Lastro to sustain Dante through the incoming fire. Uh, to be fair, it's sustaining Kratom too. He's taking a lot of pressure from Checkmate. Pulse bomb on the floor. Checkmate almost killed himself with that one. He's got no recall left. And the Florida may have now the, the turns of table, really. 14 kills for the Owlers. Only four for the Florida Mayhem right now. And two of those are from the Widowmaker. Hydron not getting any more value down. And uh, the Houston Outlaws, they're going to be very happy with this the nano boost used on to someone rather late so not gonna have to contend with this into this final push well i mean i also uh, you just you weren't able to survive long enough either like the cart got pushed into the second checkpoint before someone was able to make use of the nano uh you do at least get the primal rage online so that's gonna feel really good but a pretty significant composition swap here from florida but we're gonna see hydron go over to the sojourn animal on the lucio and rupaul now on the baptiste to be able to have that sustainability and that immortality field that's pretty big so you have a way less static backline now and that could help out florida a lot Oh, Nano Boost on to Mary. He's getting hard focused though by the rest of the Florida Mayhem. It was a nice wraparound from Florida. They used their speed boost to get onto the back line as Lasher and Creative turn to Cinder. Now he's just. Ooh, merits. A little bit of an aggro. I wouldn't say that's aggro, I guess, uh, on the offense, right? You end up uh, just trying to get away. Doesn't work out. Florida Mayhem with a quick switch up of their composition once again. Looks like someone's going on to the Zarya. Yeah, so almost a full team swap when you consider that the only one that's the same has been Checkmate's Tracer and everyone else has swapped either this team fight or the one before it. Ah, I say that. Hang on a second. That's just a full team swap there. <laughs> Checkmate's on the Genji now. Okay, so that was a hard 180 here for Florida to go from, you know, that uh, Winston-centric comp to a little bit more of this kind of run and gun strategy, but it is working. I don't know if die there. Just uh, someone hitting a right click, I guess. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but he did die. That's what we do know. All right, Florida Mayhem with a, a comp swap. Looking pretty good. Hydron having the high ground too. Window available. Florida Mayhem should be able to sustain through most of what Outlaws have got going for them. Uh, only the pulse bomb, really. And at that point, too, I mean, RuPaul has the immortality field now being on the Baptiste, so I don't think you're yeah, worried true. too much about it. Dante even forced off of it. I mean, you look at the Zarya versus Diva matchup, and Zarya usually has that one hands down, so Dante does have to switch it up here to, in order to try to make the most of this last two minutes they have and maybe get a grab online. Different approach here. They're going for the low ground instead, considering the cart's position. Seems like a pretty smart idea, but Checkmate can infinitely contest with the healers from the Florida Mayhem. Pretty, pretty slight. There's an aggressive window by RuPaul. Look at that. Jumping straight on top of the Houston Outlaws' little heads. Just Mario stomping them. Houston Outlaws now with a minute and 20 seconds to go. 
It's going to get cleaned up. So it's actually on the point. That was with a decent time bank going on to third, but Florida Mayhem only using their window for this final fight, uh, for that last fight, will make it their final one with a beat, with a, gra uh, with a grab coming up, with an overclock and a blade versus window, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure if Dante can sustain through to get the grab. He needs 40% ult charge. Yeah, and I mean, at that point, too, someone's going to outpace Dante here to keep up this kind of pressure. Oh, look at the damage. Oh, the damage. Oh, nice lap. Great if so in a corner. Can he get the lap kill? He does. It's all good. Checkmate blade, lap zero. Oh, dearie me. Okay, Outlaws do get team wiped. 40 seconds to go and a forward hold for the Florida Mayhem as they got the grab and the beat and the overclock. The ultimate economy right now for Florida has been looking at sublime. They definitely know that Florida are holding close, considering someone is a tank and he's a larger figure than a DPS. That Hydron wrapping around too, actually putting the disruptor shot behind him to see if anybody will be following in his footsteps. Looks like that's going to expire just in time for Pelican to try to make it through that way. But uh, they have to watch out for someone's grab here. I mean, just grab this little corridor. Lastro needs this beat, but he's 8% away. It's only the lap to save Dante now. A double grab, but a beat from the floor to Mayhem comes out in time for someone. And to be fair, came out for Lastro as well. But the kill is very much in favor of the Florida Mayhem right now. He's checkmate a Hydron, a race creative and merits. Hydron still on a killing spree. Lastro doesn't stand a single hope. Outlaws, Team White, their payload and their journey for their attack will end here. No third point completion. Only 75 meters and two checkpoints is a Florida Mayhem goal. Every single player in this lobby switched their hero at least once, and then played for at least a minute on that hero. I'm sure point that out. Yeah, here. I mean, you, you kind of love to see it, right? And this is what that's, the most that's exciting just, thing... That means it's a healthy meta. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's what I was going to say, yeah. Just having the ability to swap to a, major like a majority of the different heroes that you can play currently um, and make it work. We won't count Proper's Bash a little bit earlier on. A little bit of trolling, a little bit of trolling. But... Um, Having Zarya, Diva, Winston showing up, Arissa, uh, Ryan, you know, if you're London. Uh, a lot of Genji and so uh, Sojourn, obviously, because they are very strong right now. But even we're even seeing Ana, Zen, Lucio, Bath. Like, we haven't seen Mercy that much. We've seen a little bit of Moira. Uh, not a crazy amount, but a little bit here and there. Yeah, definitely a healthy meta. And coming off uh, back of a Jungle Queen meta, it was nice to have that. Uh, comp for a little while, but Jokes. variety is the spice of life. Uh, in Overwatch? Yeah, joke. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is though, and and I think Didn't that that's. Didn't last year though, so it's all good. <laughs> I mean, this is what we mean by a healthy meta, right? It's not every single meta Ad that hop. you're going to see. Nope, stop it. Let's go. Stop, stop it. Let's go. Florida, come on now. You know it's for a quick hook. If that, and then he will change. He will change. Watch Someone this. will change. Okay, he's changing. Damn it. This is uh, why I get. Oh, this is why I'm the analyst. <laughs> like yeah, that's that true. That's there. why you're the color caster. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just play by play. Me want smoke gameplay. <laughs> Me want hog. Me want hog. Exactly. Hog oh, okay. funny. Hog is funny. Well, if someone's switching to Winston, I'll take that any day of the week, especially <laughs> when you've got an Ana paired with you. Oh, Tante's in a lot of trouble. Nice little boot there from Anamo to push him back into the rest of the team. The, the speed of pace they're playing at right now is pretty damn nice. Not sure they. Dante really expected that. No way they expected Hog to stay on the field for too long, but. Nope. Florida Mayhem with a very quick team kill. Or not team kill, close. RuPaul doing whatever he, <laughs> what everybody in their games needs. Someone to push the clip. payload. Oh man, I can't remember who it was. I believe it was... Oh man, I, 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 my brain is going to found me here, or my memory is going to found me here. But there was a, a clip of someone AFKing on payload because they were pushing it as Zen, I believe, and almost getting DC time. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like sometimes. Still uh, feels that way for a support. So All right, Lastro tried to go for the touch, but it didn't end up working out. Speed run for the Florida Mayhem on that point. Uh, point a. We'll see if they can fare any differently. They ideally just want to kill Dante. Don't want to escape with that energy. Good stuff from Florida. Florida over the last couple of days, Rose, have been a little bit ridiculous in how they've been playing. Just a new level of confidence, yeah. it feels like. I mean, I didn't want to give them the recency bias because I think that there are other circumstances around that Florida 
Toronto matchup that might have skewed some of those statistics we saw from Florida, but the fact remains that their teamwork is very in sync. And, and I thought that Florida had some pain points earlier on this season with someone maybe playing a bit too aggressive and the DPS maybe not able to shore that up and, and get the follow-up necessary when someone jumps in. But everybody's on the same page right now. Animo is there to really back up someone. So if cooldowns aren't available, then someone can get out. And you also have just all this healing, all this damage. Yeah, Nano Blades, oh, both supports. History turned into soup. All right, Houston Outlaws get team wiped yet again as the Florida Mayhem continue their push with four minutes and a checkpoint two in their sights. They carry this pace on. Could be in with a meaty time bank going into the final point. And they will get, uh, Houston Outlaws will get another touch. They got four ults coming up. Uh, yep. As long as they don't die There's to Hydra. One. That is the big question. All right, Dante, a little low. He does need healing though, but he is dead. Lashro didn't get that beat online in time. Oh. And the Florida Mayhem if only Outlaws capped, we might actually see a speed record from the Florida Mayhem right now. Look at how they are playing. Right up to the spawn doors. Uh, well, Houston haven't won a fight at all this push. Their, their defense has been non-existent. They haven't even used alts yet. They have, they're sitting on four, they're gonna have five when Dante gets his grab online. And you're really hoping that they can throw these and stop this momentum that Florida are playing with. They generated so much just after that first team wipe and constantly getting picks before Houston can set up for the defense. RuPaul's gonna make a quick swap over to That's the so Batiste. Fast. And so now you have that immortality field to really help you with these more close quarters fights. And then someone on the Zarya as well. The Florida are playing to a game plan right now. They know as soon as they entered into point C, they had to change something up. And this is that change. Look at this wraparound, two rows. Oh, RuPaul gets sniped. Okay, fight's over, lads. Just back up. Or maybe survive. Although, because you're on the wrong side of the map, you, someone needs to escort RuPaul. So you need to go in as four. There you go. They're going to charge in as four. They're going to try and isolate someone. Looks like creative. Actually forced the sound barrier, which is rather large. Hydron does fall, save the checkmate, but getting the sound barrier out with four minutes to go on the time bank. Just still pretty happy about that if you're the Florida Mayhem right now. They're not particularly near the grab or the blade, to be fair, and they don't have the nano to uh, pair with the blade, but no anything to worry about. The sound barrier, still nice. Yeah. I mean, those those ultimates are, are also going to come online faster than Lastro's going to be able to get that sound barrier back. So at this point, yeah, Florida wants to try to take as many eco pushes as possible. Get that blade, get that graviton surge, um, and try to outlast some of these ultimates from Houston. They have to get them out of Houston's hands. But forcing them might be a little tough. But there is a, okay. there's one. Grab, lap dead, B comes in for the Florida Mayhem. Okay, so they wow. are committing. It is go time right now for Merit. Can he find the kills? He's already got a one on checkmate, but he's under a lot of pressure from Hydron. Looks like, ooh, she could shot an Arnimo. Wow, right. Yeah, no way someone survives this one, but if he can get out with energy, although with no Lucio, a bit harder than uh, it normally would be. Merit with a nice triple or quadra kill. I think that for the Outlaws. Uh, they do force the sound barrier from Mayhem. So right now is a little bit of flow chart overwatch. What forces what, little, what goes here bit. and there and there. But we're, so we're at the, for Outlaws. Yeah, I mean, we're at the rotation now that Florida wants, which is that they have four alts and Houston do not. So no sound barrier <laughs> available from Lastro. That did not get a chance to outpace the Blade and the Graviton Surge generation. So Florida can come into this one, throw everything, and they should be able to get this. But the old Pelican. Okay. That's all good. Nanoblade is going to result in another team wipe. Okay. Here's the flow chart. And the Florida Mayhem, they don't have beat, but that's okay. They also now have four odds. So yeah, the tables have truly turned. Outlaws are playing this incredibly smart, though. They're playing up to the spawn doors, trying to force Mayhem to use ultimates and fight them super close. The exactly. Pillow can't regress any further, but they get another fight if they do fight this close and maybe get kills here. Exactly. Dante, unfortunately, zero energy, poking away at the Florida Mayhem who just lie beneath them. Is now actually they're deciding to back away as the Florida Mayhem do ascend the staircase. You can see now Dante going in. A Graviton Surge and a window used to kill Dante. Checkmate kills two people. Make that three. A quintuple kill for the Florida Mayhem and a team kill. But the Outlaws get to reset. They do get to reset, but they're walking into a Dragon Blade and Hydron with the Overclock. This is not going to feel super good, but at least Houston, if they can use the sound barrier to get through that, then the ball is back in their court and they'll have alt economy once again. 
All right, don't lay your DP assaults challenge. They lay their DP assaults. A beat comes out from the Houston Outlaws, but actually this damage might be enough. The lamp's also been removed. The overhelp, no more to be seen. Lastro is super low, trying to get back to the rest of his team as he was trying to boot checkmate away from his team. Merit with an unbelievable double kill on Hydron and Animo might have just saved this push. There's a minute to go for the Florida Mayhem on what was a gargantuan time bank of five minutes going into third has been whittled down. This is incredible. I mean, Houston could actually win this map here, but it all comes down to Dante hitting this Graviton Surge. By the time the Florida Mayhem walks back into this one, it is final fight territory, and that payload is only meters away from being sunk in by Florida and letting them go up one map in the series. It's, it's, it's here, it's now, and Dante's gotta hit this grab before Animo gets his sound barrier online. He's 6% away. Animo needs it. 3%, Dante's got the grab. He's hunting for the front line. Animo's now got the beat. How do the Houston Outlaws play this? Dante jumps down to the low ground as the Florida Mayhem try and make their move onto the point. The beat comes out just in time to save RuPaul. Also, the lamp can't be killed either because it's around the corner. The Florida Mayhem are just gonna push in. Houston Outlaws gets wiped. And the five minute time bank was maybe all that they needed. A near overtime push there for the Florida Mayhem. They get the payload into that white box of victory in the end. The Outlaws go down on what was an unbelievable defense. They can definitely be proud of that one, but prouder could be the Florida Mayhem after that final push. They end up taking a second map in the series as we go to a fourth. That was absolutely close. That was so, so, so close there. I think Houston just had a really almost insurmountable defense there, but whew. Yeah, okay. I mean, maybe Florida may have take the 3-1 that I predicted. I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. maybe, maybe. Wow, that was a Goliath time back, like literal speed run territory for the Florida Mayhem on their attack. I cannot believe Houston Outlaws held on for as long as they did. They couldn't quite turn it around in the end. It was just the overwhelming ult from the Florida Mayhem. A lot of flow charts happening there. The Florida <laughs> had the PhD in mass at the very end and uh, able to win that one. We're going to jump to a quick break. We've got map number four after this one. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. Uh, you may have heard me talk about it before, but don't forget, the Overwatch League is now on TikTok. Uh, to celebrate, we're offering one lucky fan a chance to win a trip to the Grand Finals. Visit the link below or check out the official Overwatch League TikTok to learn how to enter the TikTok sweepstakes. There you go. The link is on screen or uh, it'll be in chat for the, or the toilet. Yeah, one of those three. Oh, you can Google it. There you go. Uh, easy peasy. <laughs> Right, back into the series at hand. Florida Mayhem looking like they were setting a speed record on um, that last map. My God, Dorado was quick, kind of. Uh, very quick, point A and B, attack for the Florida Mayhem. But the final point, where they had five minutes, they finished no T. So the Houston Outlaws with a stellar defense very much was a Dave versus Goliath situation. Um, Goliath won in the end. They kind of stopped on the Outlaws there. <laughs> <laughs> the guy got it was so bank. close, though. It turned into OT, but yeah, it was extremely close. And they are 2 1 up, and we go yeah. to Queen Street's next map. Yeah, I mean, it came down to just having ultimates coming online at the right time um, and getting picks before the sound barrier could really shore up the defense there for Houston Outlaws. Um, but New Queen Street, a whole different ball game here. This is where we get to see the clutch factor of Houston. You know, Coliseo has really been their stomping grounds uh, for the entirety of the season. And I know that New Queen Street's gonna be next up on the docket, but still looking at going for brawl, going for just kind of maybe some off angles or something and, and Merritt and Pelican, their synergy seems to be on point when it comes to these push maps. Yeah, we'll see. No substitutions either. No Surma Shed for the Florida Mayhem. More than happy to run Arnimo, especially in a meadow that you look at a lot more. Lucio, Arnimo is the perfect pick. Has, a, has had a couple of nice plays so far as Arnimo. We'll have to wait and see what they want to run in New Queen Street. Looks like we're just waiting for the Houston Outlaws. Looks like Dante is not sleeping this time around. He can't no. sleep in this series. He's just uh, AFK at the moment. So I'm sure we'll be back in uh, a minute or so, and then we'll jump into the fourth map. Um, probably the same thing here, Rose, in terms of... God, that is so weird. <laughs> like oh, Dante yeah, seeing just him, like, through walking through other people's player cams. Yeah, and then just so, well, ends up like in four his at the same time. I know. There's just, just that's a lot of Dante. Did you know that Dante's twin actually comes in to play, like, the Zarya, and then he's got a triplet that comes in to play the Diva? That's crazy. And then his, his like... That? Other personality comes into play, the Arisa. DPS, I guess. Or the Arisa, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we haven't I'm seen just his joking. fourth. Yeah, it's to play DPS. Oh. It's just tank day right now. <laughs> All good. All right, we're going to map New Queen Street. It was like, what was that? What was that? Oh, I think it was on. Yeah, I was thinking about something like that happened recently. But I think it was on Plat Chat where Scott's cat walked through the frame and oh. then. Connor's cat also walked through his frame, but it looked like the cat walked through two different PCs at once, like from the cameras. It looks pretty weird. Are they? Do uh, they look the same too? I can't not remember. Not really. I, oh, okay. Um, Scott's one is black and white. And ah, but it still looks like it kind of went through like an like a wormhole or something. Yeah, it like looked like that with color. Dante a second ago. Where uh, that's funny. He's, he's either extremely <laughs> wide or uh, <laughs> wide Dante happy. Wide or, uh, Tracer. D he's diva. Yeah. Oh, no. Maybe we'll there was, um, I don't know if you've seen the wide Kiriko as well. <laughs> no. There's a picture of like wide Kiriko oh, where, no. where the image is just squished. Yeah. <laughs> so it just looks like wide Kiriko. It's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I've got some fun stats for people. Number one yeah. is that Florida have played New Queen Street the stage exactly once and also taken a win with uh, Hydron and Checkmate in the lineup, but it was uh, Sermajed actually in instead of Animo, so we'll see how they fare Five, there. But Houston four, three, uh, has a 100% win rate on New Queen Street, okay. beating the Titans that are Dallas Fuel and San Francisco Shock on this wow. map with this lineup. Do with yeah, that so as you will. A pretty strong resume for the Outlaws yes. on New Queen Street, defeating yes. Shock and the Fuel. All right, let's see if Florida can change the script. Dante, please be careful. Arnimo's right behind you. Joe, creative and someone doing up going down. Crazy. Oh, Arnimo with no poop. That's so sad. Doesn't matter. Dante goes down anyway. I drop for the kill. Looks like a RuPaul maybe got a poop up there. So 3v3. Pelican diving in onto the back line. You see Arnimo trying to just check as much as possible. Pelican does get the reset. He goes straight for the dash onto the miniature health bag. It should be another easy kill. Merit cleaning three members of the fuel up. Oh, the, uh, sorry, not the fuel. Uh, Florida Mayhem up. 
Both teams are good with that. Kind of. Not really. The Houston Outlaws take control of both. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is what I mean, though, by the synergy between Merit and Pelican. When they're both alive, and then you have Lastro as well to be able to speed you around. That's easy kill confirmed there coming through for Houston. Now they get a chance to play a little bit more aggressively, but where's Hybron? Oh, no. Creative almost actually just got dropped there. Yep, almost got dropped. It's got a shift, though. All good. Pelican. Ooh. Yep, trying to check Hydro, but he just checks him right back. She bumps his chest, sends him back to spawn. All right, the Houston Outlaws still with a nice little lead. Can Dante survive? He has pretty high energy. The support's unable to kind of keep him up long enough. Merit's also doing a sizable amount of damage, but it's actually Arnimo that's finding these final bloods. Maybe a triple kill for Lucio? No, not to be, but still, support combat for the Florida Mayhem. It's both supports now have the ults online. They even checkmate with that blade. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of ultimates coming out here for this next push. At this point, Florida are going to try to take the lead away from Houston, but to stop that, Houston should be able to come back with a couple of ultimates. It's kind of weird to say that, given that the bot hasn't actually moved all that far, but look at where Dante is already. They can just drop down before Florida take the lead. Wait. Wait for it. Pause. There we go. Blade, blade bubble. Oh my god, where'd he go? God. The disruptor well, shot turned into a black hole. Well, last throw also ends up falling for the Houston Outlaws, but not before he can use that beat. Florida Mayhem are going to do the same thing, but... We'll call that an opening from Checkmate, forcing cooldowns. Why not? We'll be uh, we'll be kind to him. Houston Outlaws still saving three ults to their own. Uh, they don't end up using their own blade. And with the pacing right now that Florida Mayhem is setting, if they do take this fight fairly aggressively, Rose, they could get the checkpoint off this push. Yeah, they could. I mean, Dante's going to try to maybe hold them off with the grab, but someone's got one locked and loaded as well. So, seeing how that works, there, there they're stopped. Grab, there's the lamp. It has disappeared. Hydron just unwilling to press the Q key, but he doesn't need to. Lasher and Dante caught that grab, instantly taken care of. Remember those beats we used the last fight, so the Houston Outlaws are going to lose the checkpoint to Florida Mayhem. We're going to continue their uh, attempted speed. That's going to be a push forward there. The bot's going to take a short break, but it's already back and moving. And Hydron 2 can now get set up. Ah, oh, got to survive the grab uh, first. Yep, got. there's the grab. That's going to save it, but not for long. Arnimo takes a face full of laser. Is it so all immortality feels to the kill feeds at the moment? Yeah, Dante's dead, I suppose. And now Hydra, Hydron's trying to fend them off with that overclock. Oh, Pelican's 1 HP. He dashes down to the low ground. How is he still alive? Eventually, is taken care of by someone as RuPaul gets back and locks down them with the window. Houston Outlaws again lose a preceding fight, and now they're in a dangerous position, Rose. 85 meters and building, and they're getting pushed to the spawn doors. Lasher cannot go down right now. Oh, I don't know. I think there, there's just nothing you can really do about this one. Yeah, Pelican is going to be able to take out someone, but Checkmate fires right back, and everybody on Florida is going to just start pushing up to the spawn. At this point, they have such a lead here, and we still have over half of the time bank left to go. Wow, it's been barely four minutes. 10 meters off, 113 meters off of this first push. Oh, they're preparing okay, to look, checkmate. look, look, look. I like what I'm seeing, checkmate. Okay, grabs online for someone, and no sound barrier for Lastro. Checkmate is un. Like, he's invisible. He's up, no. Pulls the blade from the back. Creative's the first target. Lamp's gone down, but so is Creative. A nice dash to the sky, an anime blade for Checkmate as he takes down Creative, and Dante also falls to RuPaul. A map completion in the sights of the floor of the Mayhem. They don't want to play this series any longer, Rose. They want this finished right now. Yeah, I think they're going to. I mean, someone can just walk up to the door here, grab them as they walk out of spawn. they grab Lastro. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, even if you have the sound barrier, that's it. Who can get out of touch? Lastro goes into the Pelican? grab, the bot is still pushing, but Pelican manages to get to the bot in time as the beat comes out. It hits five for the outlaws, so they're going to be able to sustain through. However, kills are still coming through from Florida, but overwhelming presence in the spawn door plus the beat is going to secure them the fight. But 123 meters off of a push and a lens sum for the Florida Mayhem. Oh You've got to be feeling good about that one. 100 meters, uh, the difference right now. And our Outlaws had to use their sound barrier in that fight. They did. And they had to use the amplification matrix too to be able to just try to contest with Florida. So they don't have a whole lot left in the bank right now, but it will be dueling overclocks here. Yeah. Oh, Dante, the focus once again. 
He's just not had a game right now. Dante has just been the hard focus of the Florida Mayhem. And just shoved him in the coffin. Dug a six feet hole. And he's just chilling. I don't blame Florida Mayhem for focusing down Dante, though. You know, Dante has always been a very cohesive force for Houston. And if you take that out, then it, you know, how, where does the follow-up come from? It really comes down to clutch factor. And that's something Houston have, but it's way harder to do when you have a 5v5 in Florida are playing how they are, you know? Really nice window there from Florida Mayhem. I really like that. Someone goes pretty low, the lamp! Oh, the lamp! I think that went a little bit short for RuPaul there. I'm pretty sure he was supposed to aim that at someone, but he didn't end up hitting. As you now is still committing ults to this fight. Even better sign for the Florida Mayhem. Grabbers on surge, forced out. So they come back, they have that sound barrier and that blade. Still though, it's worth keeping in mind too, the robot, even though it is quicker in this mode, uh, when he's just kind of uh, don't walk him back to the point, it, you you do still take a fair amount of time. So even yes. if Florida Mayhem wipe Outlaws in this neutral fight in this midpoint, um, Outlaws are going to be able to regroup as five. So yes. you have to win two fights if you're Florida to get the full completion. But of course, you're super happy with getting 123 meters with three minutes to go. Yeah. I mean, you should have their forward spawns too now with the bot coming back and, and trying to push the barricade. Oh, look, this but is, look at this offense. Wow. They're just going to sound better into them. Lastro's going to have to counter beat, avoiding any casualties. The bot is still moving with the outlaws right now trying to stop checkmate from doing them dirty but he's still going a double kill for checkmate as he pulls the blade both supports dead for the houston outlaws they may have won against the shock and the dallas fuel but this brand new hyped up mayhem are they going to be able to top of them looking quite unlikely with only two minutes left in the time bank it is looking very unlikely. At this point, at least Pelican's Dragon Blade should be able to stick, but you have to be able to get the backup, and, and maybe that means a bubble from Dante there. Maybe it means a speed boost coming in from Lastro. But yeah, we're coming down to the wire, Jaws. It's less than two minutes remaining, and someone has another grab. Uh, so I don't want to go up against Hydron or someone when they have their ultimates online, and they both have them. I'm also trying to do the same thing. They're just trying to navigate under this little bridge here to avoid the fire from Hydron. The blade comes out from Pelican, but he just gets grabbed right in the face. As, as long as someone stays alive, the Florida Mayhem are going to be good. He's getting pumped full of heals, and Dante, once again, the clear target for the Florida Mayhem. He survived the grab initially, but wasn't able to survive any more after Hydron used that overclock. Someone was on the payload for a, a brief moment there, but it will get moving again. A minute and 16 seconds to go. Mayhem, do not want a map number five. Oh, wait. Uh, no, no. I, I, all good, so, all good. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Someone someone remember to go get the get the bot. But yeah, no. I, Florida want to shut this down here. They don't have a whole lot to be able to contest with the ultimates that Houston Outlaws have. So they're going to have to back up a little bit here. Shots for a land. Grabbed on Surge comes out and hits someone. Animo is dead. Got dipped there by a last stroke by the looks of things. Maybe the Houston Outlaws win this fight, but with 40 seconds to go and two key ultimates offline, being the grab and the overclock, it's going to be a mountain to climb. It, it, it is, because right now, Houston, they just started emptying some things out of the tank, and Florida Mayhem are at the gas tank filling up. They've got that blade coming online, the Graviton Surge. Uh, they have a lot of interesting tools to use, and really all that Houston have right now is this amplification matrix from Creative, and that's going to be enough to be able to top up some of these other ultimates Houston Outlaws need to come online in order to stand a chance. Neutral fight here for the Florida Mayhem as they're building up towards a sound barrier and a blade. A lot of reflect damage. That was pretty nice from Checkmate there. He's uh, grabbed him a few extra old points. Oh, someone he'll Checkmate. He's so low. Oh, Hydron ends up going down. Nice window use from Creative. Okay, RuPaul and Hydron are dead. Outlaws are going to be able to get the checkpoint, but we are in OT. And Florida Mayhem look at a whole slate of ultimates coming up for this next fight. This Lastro beat has to be perfect. It actually has to bring some SPD energy right now here, Jack, because like otherwise Houston, they don't stand the chance and they might have a problem. But that's oh, big! That's good. Hydron's down! That's nice pick. Nice pick. Okay, free space, free real estate right now for the Houston Outlaws. 
Florida's gonna try to wrap around. Nice. Grabbed on Surge, hits Pelican and Dante. The lamp comes out, the beat later. Perfectly timed from the Outlaws, but now they have to contend with the blade. Someone's getting focused down, but Checkmate's place is just too good. He's slicing them apart. Dante and Lastro down, overtime ticking through, and the Florida mayhem. They're gonna end their season, uh, their regular season strong. They take the series three to one over the Houston Outlaws, as Outlaws are handed their first loss on New Queen Street. Yeah, after the pedigree that they acquired on that map, uh, someone had to dethrone them, right? But what a fantastic win here for Florida. And uh, with that win too, Jaws, Florida, they shore up the seventh seed for play-ins and they will face Boston Uprising next week. So a lot of their season came to a pretty exciting finish here for their final regular season match. Man, what? I don't know. There's something about Florida. There's something about Florida. Uh, something, somewhere? Someone, Someone. maybe. Um, <laughs> look, they've looked really good over the last couple of days. That 3-0 against the Toronto Defiant was just a stomp. Like some of these maps yeah. even, to be fair, like Dorado, for example. Um, it was pretty damn close at the very end, but they capped in like record time. There were some points where Outlaws didn't even get single kills on Eichenwalder, right? Yeah. Florida Mayhem look ridiculously good right now. And we're entering the play-in stage. Um, tomorrow is the last day of the regular season. If you're a Florida fan right now, you must be screaming because they are looking unstoppable. They look really good. I think Zoe's going to be pretty happy with this win here for Florida Mayhem as oh, well. Oh, yes, Zoe. Absolutely. Yeah, that is true. Woo. Yeah, I mean, hey, that they really earned this win today. Houston Outlaws are no slouch of a team, and they made the right strategic decisions that they needed to in order to make sure that they were able to get the W today. But it was all, I think, hmm, something, somewhere, so somewhat. Something, somewhere, somewhat. Someone. <laughs> the player of our match is going to be someone. The tank for Florida Mayhem because a lot of the strategic decisions were off of the back of some very important plays that someone had to initiate. Yeah, this is uh, really been, I think, the meta for the Florida Mayhem, at least over the last couple of weeks. Like, my God, they look good. Someone's graviton surges, just it's general Zarya play, it's bubble usage. Uh, looking great. Uh, if they keep this up, honestly, they could see themselves in the playoffs. Um, Absolutely. The streak they've kind of been on, it felt like the Florida Mayhem halfway through the season had a little bit of a lackluster performance. It was like hard to tell where you'd really place them in the overall rankings because it was like, oh, a couple of wins here, a couple of wins there. But like they've really shored up their game plan and their, their game and the gameplay as a whole over the over the last two series against Toronto, against the Houston Outlaws. To be fair though, on the other side of things, Houston Outlaws sometimes also have rocky games where they mm -hmm. are going to map fives against teams we don't expect them to. Um, they are losing to teams we don't expect them to. There is still a lot of strong potential on the Houston Outlaws. It's whether they can kind of recover from this uh, coming into the playoffs. Uh, the Florida Mayhem, though, going into play-ins, a lot of teams are going to be pretty fearful. I think the Boston Uprising, looking at um, how Florida have played, they're probably pretty scared. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I mean, it's, it's going to be tough. economy is also splendid. Yeah, like, it's going to be really tough. I think uh, there were very few teams that were prepared to see this type of power level coming in from Florida Mayhem, and that's Toronto, Defiant, and Houston Outlaws that have had yeah. to face against this new amped-up version of Florida. And so, yeah, I think teams should be a little nervous having to go into play-ins against a team that is as prepared as this. But, you know, so much credit to the team for how they've evolved over the season, and they look ready to go going into post. And this is actually our last cast of the regular season two. Where we'll be jumping, uh, me and Rose will be jumping no, into play right. playoffs a little bit later <laughs> next week. It's going to be a good time. Regular season's over already. It's uh, a little bit ridiculous. One more oh. day though. That's uh, tomorrow, of course. We're going to jump to a quick break. We've got an interview with Arno after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> The Overwatch League is brought to you by Upper Deck, the official trading card of the Overwatch League. And by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League.
Well, welcome to the Watchpoint Post Show, everybody. I'm here joined now by Anamo from Florida Mayhem. Anamo, congratulations on the win. Great victory against the Houston Outlaws now. I personally want to ask you this question because, I mean, you guys have always been consistently good, but I think the, these past, uh, the very recent two matches, including this one, Florida Mayhem looks like completely a different team and you guys are sort of popping off. So, like, I want to hear from you. What changed uh, in the most recent couple of matches? Like, were there any specific changes that you guys made? 자, 첫 번째 질문에 오늘 승리 축하드리면서 아나모 선수 일단 제가 봤을 때 플로레 팀이 항상 어, 잘하는 팀이긴 하지만은 요 최근에 들어서 조금 더 되게 더 강한 모습을 어, 되게 훨씬 더 좋은 모습을 보여주는 것 같은데 어, 좀 이런 거에 대한 이유 좀 이렇게 뭐가 좀 변한 게좀 있나요 팀 내에서? 이제 원래 쓰던 조합에서 이제 저희가 지금 쓰는 자리아 조합으로 바꿨는데 연습한 지 그렇게 오래 되진 않았는데 그 코치님들이 각자 역할? 그러니까 각자 뭘 해야 되고 팀적으로 어떻게 해야 이긴다 이걸 잘 알려주시고 그 다음에 팀원들 전부 다 이제 저희는 플레이인을 준비해야 되는 상황이라 다 열심히 해서 경기력이 좋아진 것 같아요 I think the biggest reason why our performance has been increasing the, in the recent couple of matches uh, is because we sort of switched out the comp. The usual comp that we're, comp composition that we're running, uh, we switched that into a more Zarya-focused composition. And even though we had, we didn't have a lot of practice, I think our coach, uh, coaching staff was a big factor where uh, they really uh, gave us a detailed, on, detailed things on what each of us on each role have to do and not only that, I think another big thing is for us, all of our teammates on our roster, you know, we really wanted to perform well in the play-ins and practice a lot for that. So I think that's, a, I think, a big factor as well for us sort of improving our plays in the recent matches. Um, Adamo, you briefly talked about teammates. So I believe, I mean, you, Adamo, you are the sort of the not the oldest in age, but like you've you've been around the league for the longest uh, in the current. Florida Mayhem roster. So, you know, as as the as a person, I guess as, as like the young or like as the most what's the word that I'm looking for? Veteran. veteran. There you go. Sorry guys, my, my Korean side came out. Anyways, as a as the veteran uh player on the roster, like or are, are there any tips or any like things that you tell your I guess your uh your your teammates when it you know when when the when the stakes are high at times like this? So, 두 번째 질문은 이제 아나무 선수가 아무래도 이제 이번 플로리다 메이햄 어, 팀에서 아무래도 제일 리그 제일 오래 있던 선수이기 때문에 그만큼 이제 경험도 제일 많고 좀현 상황에서 지금 이제 플레이에 들어간 상황 좀 어떻게 보면 되게 중요한 시점에서 이제 팀원들에게 아무래도 이제 경험을 바탕으로 해서 좀더뭐 이럴 때는 뭐 어떻게 해야 된다 뭐 이런 팁이나 뭐 이런 얘기를 좀 자주 하시는 편인가요? 어 저는 경기 일단 졌을 때 팁? 이런 것보다는 오늘 왜 졌는지 우리가 왜 지금 힘든지 일단 저랑 같은 방 쓰는 한국인 친구들이랑은 거의 맨날 얘기하고 경기 졌을 때 그다음 외국 친구들이랑은 이제 경기가 일주일 끝나고 나면 다 같이 모여서 노는 자리가 있거든요 그때 같이 우리 앞으로 뭐 어떻게 하자 아니 뭐 분위기를 좋게 하든지 아니면 뭐 게임을 더 잘해야 된다 그런 말 가끔 하는 것 같아요. All right, so I, I don't think it's more about tips. Um, I think I sort of tend to speak a lot more when we, at uh, times that we lose a match. Um, you know, I, I like to focus or I like to tell my, tell my uh, I guess, other players uh, the reason why I think we lost and sort of those go, go along those kind of way. Um, I do talk to a lot more to the Korean players uh, that I share the same room with um, all the time. Uh, as for the non-Korean players, uh, there's, a lot of times when we hang out uh, after a match and when we're having, I guess, when we're having like a meeting, I would sort of tell them what about my thoughts and how to improve our game plays. All right, Anamo, that is it for the interview. Thank you so much for your time. And again, big congratulations on the win. So, Anamo, so today, I'm going to thank you for the interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you have it. Congratulations to the mayhem, and most importantly, congratulations uh. to myself. <laughs> most importantly, <laughs> not even the win. <laughs> most importantly, you have the longest ego in the truck. <laughs> <laughs>
I do actually, and I'm the shortest person of all of them. <laughs> so crazy, how, crazy works, how yeah. it works, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say? I got it right again. Yeah. Uh, thanks, May. <laughs> really, really helping a girl out here because I was way in the bottom of our uh, our pickings. I'm still, I, I, I still am. Like, <laughs> but not as bad. I'm getting closer, and that's all that really matters. However, what also matters is that the Mayhem now officially, of course, uh, got their place in the play. And so uh, tomorrow, nothing has to be decided. We're going to look at the bracket in just a bit. But first, let's actually break down all the action. Gentlemen, how did the Mayhem get it done? Yeah, so Florida Mayhem, congratulations on the lock in that number seven seed. Honestly, they just played clean overwatch for the most part right like they they really did adopt some of this zaya play i i remember watching in this first nepal and i didn't really like that someone sort of played so many different things like he's playing the winston here with the exact same composition that you could play the zaya and it didn't really work out in the same way so i like it when he's just more stuck towards that zaya play what is going to be working in this uh in this region for the most part because if you don't mirror that zaya it feels like you, you can just get snowballed over with how good Dante is that hero but actually in line with that the Houston Outlaws just not you know I don't know how to rate this team you just pick a lane <laughs> pick a lane Houston Outlaws are you good or are you bad because I just put you number one in my power rankings after a great match against the Dallas Fuel, oh, yeah. setting the tempo playing your game and we saw none of that in today's match yeah I mean look you you can bring up sandbagging and like playoffs and they're locked in and like all you want. I don't care. I want to celebrate the Florida Mayhem. They're 12 and 12. They ended their regular season 12 and 12. That's a real respectable record, especially considering how people were rating them going into this.